Hi everyone and welcome to this video on circular motion. Circular motion is basically an extension of the concepts which you have studied in the chapter time speed and distance. So all the concepts remain the same. Only difference being that the runners run on a circular track where the starting point and the terminating point coincide. So without wasting any moment, let's get started. Now let us say that we have a circular track of length 40 meters and there are two runners A and B. Let's say their speeds are 5 meters per second and 8 meters per second respectively. Now if I want to know the time taken by A to complete one lap would be 40 divided by 5 that is distance by speed and that comes out to be 8 seconds. Similarly if I want to know the time taken by B then that would be 40 divided by 8 which is equal to 5 seconds. So we can say that A completes one lap in 8 seconds so in every 8 seconds or in every multiple of 8 seconds A would be at the starting point. So after 8 seconds, 16 seconds, 24 seconds and so on A would be again at the starting point. Similarly B reaches the starting point at every multiple of 5 seconds so B would be at the initial point at 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds and so on. Now if I want to know which is the first instant at which both A and B would be together at the starting point then that would be equal to 40 seconds. You can clearly see at 40 seconds both A and B are at the starting point. So now what is 40 seconds here? 40 seconds is nothing but the LCM of 5 and 8. 5 seconds is the time taken by B to complete one lap and 8 seconds is the time taken by A to complete one lap. So in general we can say that if there are two runners A and B with speeds of V1 and V2 and they are running in a circular track of length L then time taken by A to complete one lap would be equal to L by V1. Similarly time taken by B to complete one lap would be L by V2. So the first instant at which both the runners would be at the starting point would be nothing but the LCM of L by V1 and L by V2. Now if I say both the runners are running in the opposite direction, would that make any difference? No, because this is independent of the direction in which the two runners are running. Now let us say there are two runners A and B and they are running in the opposite direction. Let us say the track length is 40 meters again and the speeds of A and B are 3 meters per second and 5 meters per second respectively. So now they start running and this is the first meeting point. Now both of them started at the same point and when they reached the first meeting point they had traveled for equal duration of time. So as the time is constant we can say that distance would be proportional to the speed. So distance traveled by both of them would be in the same ratio as their speeds that is 3 is to 5 because speeds of A and B are in the ratio of 3 is to 5. So we can say that distance traveled by A would be equal to 15 meters and the distance traveled by B would be equal to 25 meters. We have simply divided 40 meters in the ratio of 3 is to 5. So what I can say is together they have completed one lap. That is 15 plus 25 is equal to 40. Now if we want to find out the time taken by both of them to meet each other for the first time then that would be equal to A has traveled 15 meters at the speed of 3 meters per second. So time taken by A would be equal to 5 seconds and also the time taken by B would be equal to 5 seconds. Now let's say that they continue running. So now this would be the second meeting point. Now again we can say that they have traveled for the same duration so again distance traveled by A would be equal to 15 meters and similarly distance traveled by B would be 25 meters. So again we can say that the duration of time between the first meeting and the second meeting would be equal to 5 seconds. Also Together they have completed one lap in each of their meet. We have earlier seen that when they met for the first time collectively they had completed one lap. In the second meeting again they had completed one lap together. So what we can deduce from it? We can say that some of the number of laps completed by the two runners will give us the number of times they meet each other. 
So if you want to find out the number of times the two runners have met each other, then what you have to do is you have to simply add the number of laps completed by them individually. So that would give you number of times they have met each other. Let's try to understand the same scenario using a different approach. The speeds of A and B are 3 meters per second and 5 meters per second and they are running in the opposite direction. So if I want to find out what is the relative speed of B with respect to A, then I have to keep A at rest. So that can be done by giving A a speed of 3 meters per second in the opposite direction. So if we have given A a speed of 3 meters per second in this direction, then we have to give B as well the speed of 3 meters per second. And this collectively means that we have given B a speed of 8 meters per second while A is standing at the starting point that is the speed of a is zero so now b is moving with a speed of eight meters per second along this track and meets again a at the starting point so after what time b will meet a so time taken by b to meet a would be equal to 40 divided by eight 8 is a relative speed and so that comes out to be 5 seconds which is the same that we calculated earlier and if b continues to move then we can say that after an interval of every 5 seconds they meet each other so what we got to do is we have to take into consideration their relative speed if they are running in the opposite direction then their speeds would be added and the track length divided by their relative would give us the duration of time at which they meet each other now let's look at another case if the two runners are running in the same direction so let's say the track length is 60 meters and the speed of a is 2 meters per second while that of b is 5 meters per second so what we can say is speed of a is 2 b is 5 and again if we want to find out the relative speed we give a a speed of 2 meters per second in this direction so we have to give b a speed of 2 meters in this direction and so the relative speed of b would be 3 meters per second in this direction while a is standing at the starting point so time taken by b would be equal to 60 divided by 3 that comes out to be equal to 20 seconds so now what we can say is that b meets a at an interval of 20 seconds now the distance traveled by a would be equal to speed of a is 2 meters per second while we have seen that the time taken by b to meet a is equal to 20 seconds so in this duration of 20 seconds a would have traveled 20 into 2 which is equal to 40 meters and the distance traveled by b would be equal to 20 into 5 that comes out to be equal to 100 meters so if we visualize this scenario b is running a is running and this is their first meeting point so what we can say is a has traveled this distance 40 meters and b has traveled a distance of 100 meters which is 40 plus 60 now 60 is one lap and 40 is equal to the distance traveled by a so this implies that b has traveled one extra lap as compared to a a had traveled 40 meters b had traveled 100 which is 40 plus 60 40 is same as a distance traveled by a and 60 is one extra lap so what we can say we can say that every time both a and b would meet then b would have covered an extra lap compared to a so we can finally say that the faster runner completes one extra lap every time the two runners would meet each other and if we find out the difference between the number of laps completed by them then that would give us the number of times they have met each other in a given time interval. So in a nutshell, we can say that if the speeds are V1 and V2 of the two runners, track length L, then if they are running in the opposite direction, then time taken for them to meet for the first time would be L divided by V1 plus V2, where V1 plus V2 is their relative speeds. And if they are running in the same direction, then time taken for the first meet would be L divided by V1 minus V2. Again, V1 minus V2 is their relative speed. And also, if you want to find out the number of times they have met each other or the number of meetings, then what we got to do is we have to simply add the number of laps completed by the two runners if they are running in the opposite direction. And if they are running in the same direction, then we have to find out the difference in number of laps completed by the two runners. Let's try to solve an example. 
P can run one full round of circular track in 4 minutes while Q can run the same track in 7 minutes. Both P and Q start simultaneously from the same point. Then how many times would they meet each other when running in the same direction and in the opposite direction if Q has completed 12 rounds? I hope you have noted down the problem. Now let's look at the solution. The ratio of time taken by P and Q is 4 is to 7. It has been given that P completes one round in 4 minutes while Q completes the same round in 7 minutes. So the ratio of the time taken is 4 is to 7. Now as the distance is constant in this case, then the speeds would be in the inverse ratio. So speeds would be in the ratio of 7 is to 4. Now this means that if Q has completed 12 rounds, then P would have completed 21 rounds as the number of laps or number of rounds completed by them would be in the same ratio of their speeds. Now, if both of them are running in the same direction, then the number of their meetings would be nothing but the difference in the number of laps completed by them. So, this difference is 21 minus 12 equal to 9. And if they are running in the opposite direction, the number of meetings would simply be the sum of number of laps completed by them. That is 12 and 21 which comes out to be 33. So they have met for 9 times if they are running in the same direction. While running in the opposite direction, they would have met for 33 times. I hope the solution is clear. Let's proceed to next problem. It is given that two sprinters are running in the clockwise direction along a circular track of length 6 kilometers. The faster sprinter overtakes the slower one every 2 hours. If the faster sprinter completes one lap 6 minutes sooner than the slower, then what is the speed of the slow sprinter? So here we have been given the length of track and they are running in the same direction. Also given that the faster sprinter overtakes the slower one every 2 hours and the faster sprinter completes one lap 6 minutes sooner than the slower. So here we have to find out the speed of the slower sprinter. So let's look at the solution. So let us say that the speed of the two sprinters be V1 and V2 kilometers per hour. Now as they are running in the same direction, then the time taken for them to meet each other would be L by V1 minus V2. That is the relative speed would be difference of their speeds. So length of the track is 6 and the relative speed would be V1 minus V2 and this time is equal to 2 as they meet each other after every 2 hours. So from this we get V1 minus V2 equal to 3 and let's say this is equation number 1. Now time taken by the faster runner to complete one lap would be 6 by V1 simply length of the track divided by the speed of the runner. Similarly time taken by the slower runner would be equal to 6 by V2. Also we have been given that this difference is equal to 6 minutes. So we can say that 6 by V2 minus 6 by V1 equal to 1 by 10 or this comes out to be 1 by V2 minus 1 by V1 equal to 1 by 60 and let's say this is equation number 2. On solving 1 and 2 what we get is V1 is equal to 15 kilometers per hour while the speed of the slow runner comes out to be 12 kilometers per hour. I hope the solution is clear to you. Let's look at another example. Given that Tom and Jerry are running along a circular track and they have started from the same point in the same direction. By the time they meet for the 10th time, how much more distance than Jerry would have Tom traveled if the speeds of Tom and Jerry are 12 meters per second and 10 meters per second and given that the radius of the track is 14 meters. So we have been given the speeds of Tom and Jerry, also the radius of the track is given and we have to find out how much more distance than Jerry would have Tom traveled by the time they meet for the 10th time. So again let's look at the solution. Radius of the track is given to be 14 meters. So we know the radius, we can calculate the length of the track that is circumference of this circle which is 2 pi r. Taking pi as 22 by 7, the length of the track comes out to be 88 meters. Also speed of Tom is given to be 12 meters per second while that of Jerry is 10 meters per second. Also we know that whenever the two runners are running in the same direction, also we know that if the two runners are running in the same direction, then every time they meet each other, the faster runner completes one extra round compared to the slower runner. So number of times they have met is given to be 10. 
So what we can say is the number of extra laps taken by Tom would be equal to 10. And thus the extra distance traveled by Tom compared to Jerry would be equal to 10 into 88. 88 is length of the track, 10 is the extra number of laps and which comes out to be 880 meters. Let's try to solve another example. Sunny and Nitish start running from a point A on a circular track with different speeds and in opposite directions. Sunny runs in the clockwise direction and meets Nitish at a distance of 700 meters in the clockwise direction from A. They again meet each other for the second time at a distance of 600 meters in the anti-clockwise direction from A. If Nitish is still in his first round, then what is the length of the track? Let's try to understand the situation and then we'll proceed to solve it. Now Sunny and Nitish are moving in the opposite direction and they're running along a track length of let's say L units. So this is how they are moving and this is their first meeting point. Now it is given that distance of their first meeting point from A in the clockwise direction is 700 meters. Sunny has covered a distance of 700 meters and let us say that this distance is equal to x or the distance traveled by Nitish from A to their first meeting point is equal to x meters. Now length of the track is equal to 700 plus x. So if we are able to find out the value of x then we can definitely calculate the value of L. Now in the second case this is again uh, the first meeting point and this distance is equal to x. Now they continue their journeys and they meet at this point and this is the second meeting point. Now here an important thing to note is if Nitish has covered a distance of x meters in their first meet then again Nitish would travel a distance of x meters in the second meet. So the distance from the first meeting point to the second meeting point would also be equal to x meters. And it has been given that the second meeting point is at a distance of 600 meters in the anti-clockwise direction from A. So what we can say is this entire distance is equal to 600 meters or 600 is equal to 2x. You can clearly see that this distance, this entire distance is equal to 2x which is equal to 600 or x is equal to 300. If we substitute the value of x over here, we get the length of track equal to 300 plus 700 that is equal to 1000 meters. So you see this is a complicated problem but if we try to visualize it becomes very simple. Now there is one last concept that we need to understand which is finding the number of distinct meeting points at which the runners would meet on the track if they are running in the same direction or in the opposite direction. So let's start with the case of opposite directions. Let's take an example. Let's say the track length is of 5 meters and the two runners are running with the speed of 2 meters and 3 meters in the opposite directions. Now what we have done here is we have divided this track of 5 meters into 5 equal parts and let's say these points are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now the two runners would start moving in this manner. When they meet, the green runner would have completed 2 meters while the yellow runner would have completed again 3 meters. So this is their first meeting point. Now they continue moving and again the green runner would have completed 2 meters and the yellow one would have completed 3 meters and this becomes the second meeting point. Again they start moving. Now they are going to meet at this point and this is the third meeting point. Similarly, they again move and this becomes the fourth meeting point and again it completes 2 meters and this yellow runner completes 3 meters and this becomes the fifth meeting point. So all these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are the different meeting points and, and you can understand that if they continue moving they would again meet at this point, then at this point and so on. So what we can say is we have five distinct meeting points on this track and these two runners were running in the opposite directions. So in general what we can say is if there are two runners A and B and let's say the ratio of their speeds is A is to B. 
if they are running in the opposite direction then the number of distinct meeting points would be simply a plus b and if they are running in the same direction what would happen yes of course the number of distinct meeting points would be a minus b that is the difference of a and b now you note that a and b are in the simplest ratios for example if the two runners are running with a speed of 6 and 10 then we are not going to take a and b as 6 and 10 we are going to reduce them to the simplest form that is 3 is to 5 and then we can calculate the number of distinct meeting points so just remember that a and b must be in the simplest ratio let's look at an example there are six runners a b c d e and f and they have speeds in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4 is to 5 is to 6 a c and e are running in the clockwise direction while b d and f are running in the anti-clockwise direction starting from the same point we have to find out in how many distinct points on the track do any of the two runners meet each other so now we have been given the six runners and the ratio of their speeds is 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4 is to 5 is to 6 now it is also given that a c and e are running in the clockwise direction while b d and f are running in the anti-clockwise direction so we can say that a c and e are running in the same direction while b d f are running in the opposite direction compared to what a c and e are running now we have to find out at how many distinct points on the track would at least any two of them would meet now if i look at a and b then a and b are running in the opposite directions and also the ratio of the speeds is 1 is to 2 so when runners are running in the opposite direction the number of meeting points would simply be a plus b that is addition of the ratios so i can say that there are three distinct points on the track at which a and b would meet similarly if i look at a and c then a and c are running in the same direction and their ratio of speed is 1 is to 3 so now the number of meeting points should be 2 and so we have to divide the track into two equal parts so continuing in this manner we can say that with a and b running in the opposite directions number of distinct points would be 3 so we divide the track length into three equal parts l by 3 to l by 3 and l similarly with a and c a and c running in the same direction with the speeds in the ratio of 1 is to 3 so number of points would be 3 minus 1 equal to 2 so l by 2 and l similarly with a and d a and d running in the opposite directions with the speed of 1 is to 4 so number of points would be 5 and those distinct points are l by 5 2 l by 5 3 l by 5 4 l by 5 and l similarly with a and e running in the same directions with speeds in the ratio of 1 is to 5 the points would be 4 and these are l by 4 l by 2 3 l by 4 and l with a and f we see that there would be seven points as a and f are running in the opposite directions with speeds in the ratio 1 is to 6 so the points would be l by 7 2 l by 7 and so on up to l again b and c b and c are running in the opposite directions with speeds in the ratio of 2 is to 3 so number of points would be 5 and these are the distinct points on the track where they meet similarly with b and d b and d running in the same directions with the speeds in the ratio of 2 is to 4 now we have to reduce 2 is to 4 in its simplest form which becomes 1 is to 2 and so we get only one meeting point and that is the starting point with b and e b and e they are running in the opposite directions with the speeds in the ratio of 2 is to 5 so number of points would be 7 and these are those points with b and f b and f running in the same direction and their speeds are in the ratio of 2 is to 6 again we have to reduce it to the simplest form which becomes 1 is to 3 and so there are only two distinct points where they meet with c and d c and d running in the opposite directions with speeds in the ratio of 3 is to 4 so number of points would be 7 with c and e we get two distinct points because running in the same direction the c and f we see that c and f are running in the opposite directions but their speeds are in the ratio of 1 is to 2 so number of points would be 3 l by 3 2 l by 3 and l with d and e we see that 
the speeds are in the ratio of 4 is to 5 so number of points would be 9 and these are those points on the track where they meet with D and F we see that speeds are in the ratio of 2 is to 3 and so and also they are running in the same direction which gives us only one distinct point of meeting which is the starting point with E and F we see that they are running in the opposite directions with the speeds in the ratio of 5 is to 6 so there would be 11 such meeting points so with all these calculations we see that there are 32 different points on the track where any of these two runners would meet each other. I hope this problem is very much clear to you. Let's move with some more examples. Let's say there are two cars A and B that start simultaneously on a circular track of length 8 kilometers from a point O in the opposite directions. Every time they meet each other, A increases its speed by 2 kilometers per hour while B decreases its speed by 2 kilometers per hour. If they meet for the 5th time at 4 p.m. and for the 19th time at 4.56 p.m. then at what time did they meet for the 8th time? So in this problem we are given that two runners are running in the opposite directions and length of the track is 8 kilometers. Every time they meet each other A increases its speed by 2 kilometers while B would decrease its speed by 2 kilometers per hour. We have also been given that at 4 p.m. they met for the 5th time and at 4.56 p.m. they met for the 19th time. We have to find out at what time did they meet for the 8th time. So, let's look at the solution. The two runners are running in the opposite directions and length of the track is 8 kilometers. Now, speed of A increases by 2 kilometers per hour while that of B decreases by 2 kilometers per hour. Now, tell me one thing. If the runners are running in the opposite directions, then what is our relative speed? We simply add their speeds and that gives us the magnitude of relative speed. As A is increasing his speed by 2 km per hour and B is decreasing by 2 km per hour, we can say that their relative speed remains constant. And so, if the relative speed remains constant, then time interval between each meet would also remain constant. And this is a very important clue. Now, we have been given that the time interval between the 5th and the 19th meet would be they met for the 19th time at 4.56 p.m. and for the 5th time they met at 4 p.m. So this interval comes out to be 56 minutes. And also, the number of meets from 6th to 19th from the 6th meet to the 19th meet is equal to 14. So, the entire duration is of 56 minutes and they have met for 14 times during this interval. What we can say? We can say that the time between each meet would be equal to 56 divided by 14 which comes out to be 4 minutes. So, the time interval between each of their meets would be equal to 4 minutes and this would remain constant. And this helps us to find out the time at which they met for the 8th time. This would be nothing but equal to C. They met for the 5th time at 4 p.m. And from 5th meet to the 8th meet. There are 3 meetings actually. The 6th meet, 7th meet and the 8th meet. And every meeting takes place at an interval of 4 minutes. So we have to add 3 into 4 that is 12 minutes to 4 p.m. And and thus we can surely say that the 8th meet happened at 4.12 p.m. So this problem was quite easy. The only thing is we have to understand that the relative speed in this case remained constant and the time interval between every meet actually depends on the relative speed. Let's look at one more example and this problem appeared in CAT 2004. It says that a sprinter starts running on a circular path of radius r meters. Her average speed in meters per minute is pi r during the first 30 seconds, pi r by 2 during the next 1 minute, pi r by 4 during the next 2 minutes, pi r by 8 during the next 4 minutes and so on. What is the ratio of the time taken for the nth round to that for the previous round? And the options are 4, 8, 16 and 32. So now in this problem, the speed of the sprinter is changing actually. Her speed for the first 30 seconds is given to be pi r. 
in the next one minute the speed is pi r by 2 in the next two minutes is pi r by 4 in the next four minutes it is pi r by 8 and this progression is continuing we have to find out the ratio of time taken for the nth round to that for the previous round so how to do it let's look at the solution for it actually in this problem we have to calculate the ratio of time taken for for the nth round to that for the previous round. So let's say we find out the time taken for the first round and time taken for the second round. The ratio of second to the first would be the same as what has been asked in the problem. So let's first calculate the time taken by the sprinter to complete the first round. Okay, the circumference of the track would be 2 pi r. Also, we have been given that the speed for the first 30 seconds of 1 by 2 minutes is pi r. So distance covered in this duration of time would be pi r into 1 by 2 speed into time which comes out to be pi r by 2. Thus we can say that in the first 30 seconds of 1 by 2 minutes the sprinter has covered a distance of pi r by 2. Now pi r by 2 is nothing but one quarter of the track or one fourth of the track. So now for the next one minute the speed is pi r by 2 so distance traveled in this one minute would be pi r by 2 into 1 which again comes out to be pi r by 2 thus in this duration of one minute again the sprinter has covered one quarter of the track or one fourth of the track next in the next two minutes the speed is pi r by 4 so distance covered would be pi r by 4 into 2 which comes out to be again pi r by 2 so again for the next two minutes the sprinter has covered a distance of pi r by 2 which is one fourth of the track now for the next four minutes the speed becomes pi r by 8 which gives us again the distance as pi r by 2 so we can say that in the next four minutes sprinter has covered one fourth of the track which makes it a one complete round Thus, time taken for the sprinter to complete the first round is, we have to add all these minutes. That is 1 by 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 4, which is equal to 15 by 2 minutes. Thus, we can say that the time taken by the sprinter to complete the first round comes out to be 15 by 2 minutes. Now, let's calculate the time taken for the second round. For the second round, again, the distance traveled for the first 8 minutes would be speed into time. Speed is pi r by 16 and time taken is 8 which again gives us the distance as equal to pi r by 2. So for these 8 minutes the sprinter has covered one fourth of the track. Again in the next 16 minutes the speed becomes pi r by 32. So again the distance traveled is pi r by 2 which is one quarter of the track and so in these 16 minutes the sprinter has covered one fourth of the track. In the next 32 minutes, speed is pi r by 64. Again, the distance comes out to be pi r by 2, which is one fourth of the track. And in the next 64 minutes, the distance covered would be pi r by 2, the same logic. So we can say that the second round has been completed and time taken for the sprinter to complete the second round is 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64, which comes out to be 120 minutes. So the ratio of time taken to complete second round to the first is 120 divided by 15 by 2. 120 is the time taken for the second round and 15 by 2 is the time taken for the first round which gives us the ratio as equal to 16. So see we have very easily solved this problem that appeared in CAT 2004 and on the topic circular motion. With this we come to the end of our video. Thank you for watching. This is Neeruj signing off until next time. Do subscribe to our video channel for more lessons. If you like the video, do not forget to hit the like button. Share this video with your friends. For more updates, find us on Facebook. Thank you.